Hello and welcome to another video. In this one I'll be explaining, well, <laughs> I can't possibly explain all of Curses, but I'm going to show you a little bit of a Hello World in Curses and kind of explain what Curses is about. And yeah, let's just jump into that. So, if I select the right scene, uh, <laughs> um, so what Curses is, is it's a cell based, uh, and cell is just like a character on your terminal, kind of, uh, a cell based terminal UI library. Uh, now, if you've ever, you know, used a text editor like Nano, uh, you'll see that like it renders a UI at the top and at the bottom and like you, you kind of get this this little UI setup and that's that's actually using cursors to render the screen. Uh, recently, I've been getting into curses a lot because I wrote my own text editor. Uh, let's, you know, open, uh, open some part of my text editor with my text editor. Uh, so I wrote this text editor, uh, partially because I wanted to learn curses and for a bunch of other unimportant reasons. But anyway, as part of that, I've learned a lot about how curses works and I wanted to give you kind of a structure for how you can build your own terminal UI applications using curses. So let's start with that. We're just going to make a, you know, Python file. We'll put a little skeleton for a command line. Uh, I've explained this in a previous video. I believe it's the uh, pyt or <laughs> I believe it's the first video, uh, mate. Uh, so we're just going to start with a basic structure here. I'll return an integer, and we're going to import curses. Curses has a lot of functions in it, so if you're ever wondering like how to do something specific with it, uh, it's often better to just Google or read through the documentation, try and control F around to find stuff like that. Uh, the only unfortunate thing is, well, not the only unfortunate thing. One unfortunate thing is the functions are not necessarily the best names. So you kind of have to figure out what you're looking for and then search for the right terms to get to the right function. But anyway, uh, we're going to define a main, this will be the main entry point for our program. We might do some like argument parsing or other stuff here. Uh, but for this simple program, we're not actually going to do any of that. Uh, and we're going to define a C main, and this will be our, our curses main. And it's going to take in a screen, which has this type here. Uh, this is actually a made up type from TypeShed, but uh, this will, if you're using MyPy, this will type check properly. Uh, we don't want to return stir, we want to return integer. So we're going to make the C main function, and at the end, we'll return zero. And in our main, we're going to call curses.wrapper on C main. Now, what curses.wrapper does is it sets up the proper screen data structure. That is how uh, curses does all of its rendering stuff. And it will take a function here and pass in the screen there. If you needed additional arguments here, you can just pass them here and make a new parameter here. So, you know, let's say like, we, we had some command line parsing with like arg parse or whatever, and we ended up with some argument. You can pass that into your function here. Now we don't have that, so we're gonna remove that for today. And this is the most basic curses program. It doesn't really do anything. And if you, if you run it, um, this will be quick. So it'll be hard to see this, but if you run it, oh, it's so fast you don't even see it. Uh, but, uh, we'll put a sleep in here. This actually initializes the curses UI and then uh, resets it at the end. So you'll you'll see like the terminal goes away and then it comes back. And that's kind of the curses UI. Now the way I usually structure these programs uh, is, and this will change based on what you're trying to do. Uh, I will have an infinite loop that I start at the top. I'll have a rendering phase. So this is where we'll draw to the screen and I'll show you that in a second. And we'll also have a retrieval at the end. Uh, so this will be like care equals standard skr dot get wch. Now these are just functions that I happen to memorize, uh, but you can look up how they work. What get wch will do is it'll ask for a character from the keyboard and it will wait until it gets that character. You can turn the waiting off if you wanted a real time program. For instance, if you were writing like a, a snake game, for instance, you would want to be able to react immediately when uh, a key is pressed. So this will retrieve a character from the keyboard. And now if we run this, you'll see that um, it waits while we 
uh, while we type something in. And, it, and right now it's actually looping forever and it's not really doing anything. Uh, it keeps continually retrieving this character because we had an infinite loop here. Uh, so I'm in a control C which is going to crash the program and that's fine. Um, we'll make a way to actually exit the program in a second. Uh, but based on this retrieved character, um, you will uh, you'll you'll perform some action here. So let's let's do something very simple where we just like print hello, what is your name? And then you input your name and then press enter or something. Yeah, sure, that'll that'll be <laughs> that's actually gonna be kind of tricky to implement. Uh, let's try and do that though. Um, so let's use insert stir. So there's two main ways to draw strings to the screen. One of them is insert stir and the other one is uh, add stir. I find that insert stir makes it a little bit easier to work with curses because you don't have to worry about bounds checking as much. Uh, in curses, if, you're, if your cursor moves off the screen or if you write stuff off the screen, um, you will get an error. <laughs> but insert stir avoids that. And it takes the first two parameters are a, a coordinate where you're starting to insert from, and it actually goes y x. Now, normally when you're working with coordinates, you would add x comma y, but curses uses y comma x probably to simplify something behind the scene. I'm not really sure, but that's that's just the way it works. And um, and we'll we'll just do hello world first first off. Uh, and this will insert hello world at the very top left corner of the screen. And we're just going to make this exit as soon as we type any character. Uh, so this will run now. You'll see that we've gotten hello world in the top left hand corner of the screen, uh, which is where zero zero is. And our cursor is still blinking here. So the thing about insert stir is it puts the cursor at this position after it's done drawing the screen. Now, if you were taking input, you would probably want to move the cursor past that point. So you could do something like move. And what uh, the y will be this, len hello world plus one. Um, of course, you could use add stir and it would do all of this for you. But, uh, and you'll see if we press one character from the previous one, that exited because we broke out of this infinite loop here. And so now if we run this now, you can see I've moved to uh, one, one space after hello world. And if we instead switch this for add stir, you'll see that it does that kind of for you. Hello world. You can see like it, it moves the cursor after this this string here. Now of course I would probably you know put a space here so it moved past one. And that's all fine and dandy. Um, the problem becomes when you and I should probably switch screens so you can see this. The problem becomes when you write past the end of a line. So my terminals are currently set to 80 characters wide. And if we write a string that's 80 characters wide. Uh, 3 t.py, you'll see that the cursor went to the next line. And this might be desirable, might be what you want to do. Um, but in some cases, it will cause a crash. Let me show you where it causes a crash. Uh, if we write to the bottom line of the screen, let's put this back to 79 so it doesn't crash. And curses provides this handy curses.lines constant, which will change as your screen resizes. Uh, although you have to run some command to make it resize, but <laughs> we'll, we'll show that in a second. Uh, so you can see here it, it drew 79 X's at the very bottom, and then there's one little space left on the bottom of the screen. And if you were to actually draw 80 spaces or 80 X's here, I said spaces, my bad. <laughs> if you draw 80 here, it will actually crash because this causes the cursor to go off the bottom left or the bottom right hand corner of the screen, and that's an error in cursive. So you got to be careful about that. Uh, that's some, something to look out for. But anyways, let's um, let's try and do some input and uh, retrieve some characters and then print something. Uh, so we're gonna draw what is your name at the top corner of the screen. I'm gonna cheat and use adster just because it's gonna be a little bit easier. And we're gonna put a little space there. And we're gonna retrieve the characters one at a time and also draw them to the screen as they're retrieved. So we're gonna start by having name as the empty string. Um, we're going to add the uh, the name after this prompt here. And you can actually just use standard screw.addster with just a string. You don't need the coordinates. It will default to wherever the cursor is on the screen. 
Let's do that, and then we're gonna retrieve a character. Leave care. Um, I'll actually just raise assertion error on care for now, just to see what it is, uh, so you can see what type of data here, uh, what type of data happens here. The unfortunate thing about curses is it kind of takes over your screen, so it's a little bit difficult to debug stuff. So you often have to resort to print debugging or um, other non directly typable terminal debuggers, for instance, like remote PDB, which actually allows you to deb debug over a socket. Uh, so let's run this again. And so you can see here, it's saying, what is your name? And it's prompting us for a character here. And if we type A, you can see that it's a printable character there. Uh, so we're gonna actually use that, uh, that property. So, so sometimes this function can return an integer and we'll look at some of those integers in a second. And care dot is printable, then name plus equals care. So let's just do that. So now if we go to this and we type, uh, uh, wait, it exited. <laughs> All right, because we have a break here. Uh, if we type like Anthony, you can see that it allows us to type that into the terminal. Uh, but if we were to press uh, like enter, for instance, it will error out. Oh, actually enter would have been fine. But let's try like backspace. You can see backspace is actually this integer here, and curses defines a bunch of constants for us. So let's say elif is instance care int. Uh, actually, we can just say elif care is equal to curses dot key. Uh, I think it's backspace. <laughs> um, and I happen to know that on macOS you need to do or care is equal to uh, x97. I want to say it is. <laughs> Let me check. Uh, heavy slash screen. This is what, what happens when you've done all this work before. Backspace. Oh no, I don't have the key code there. Test, features, comp test. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, anyway, there is some character for, for macOS, but I, I don't remember what it is. I believe it's x97, but you guys can figure that out if you're on macOS. Uh, if it's backspace, we want to delete a character from our string. So we can do name equals name colon negative one. And so now if we run this little thing, see, we can type Anthony and we can backspace stuff. Hey, why didn't that work? Oh, because it doesn't clear the line. So we should probably um, run standard square dot clear. I think it's that function. Let's try this again. It almost works. It's very close to working. <laughs> um, what if we clear up here instead? of down there. Let's try that. Cool, now we can, you know, backspace stuff. So there's there's kind of like a, a little bit of a key input here. Uh, and now let's make it so that we can press enter here. And enter actually sends, uh, what does it send? <laughs> we will look at what it sends. So if we do Anthony and press enter, okay, it just passes backslash n. Health care is equal to backslash n. Um, let's see. Um, we'll make a boolean to print afterwards. Name done equals false. But name done equals true. And if name done, then we'll print some message on the second line that says like, oh, welcome, Anthony. Uh, well, or <laughs> whatever your name is. Uh, standard skr dot adster, and instead of line zero, we'll do line one. Uh, oh, hi, name. And, um, yeah, so let's do that. So now if we run this and we type Anthony and press enter, it says, oh, hi. <laughs> but anyways, that's kind of like a, a very, very simple program in curses. Uh, I might do more in-depth or different demos of curses in the future if you guys are interested in that. Uh, but thank you all for watching. 
and I'll see you guys around in the next one. Cheers.